All right, so we're gonna take a look at a couple different ways to transfer soul. So the first one we're gonna do is gonna be from the client side. And you can see this is how we got it set up, right? So we've got our test file here. We're just gonna create a new key pair that we're gonna transfer into. And we're just gonna use the system program dot transfer function. And that's gonna just return to us this instruction. And then we can go ahead and send a transaction with that instruction. So pretty straightforward. You just use the client side Solana Web 3 JS to go set up the instructions, send them to the system program and we're good. And you can see there's the test right there that we ran. So to start, our payer had this massive balance here and our recipient had zero. And when we got finished, you could see that our recipient had one soul. And if you see the change here is actually gonna be this three and this two here. So you can see we actually decremented our payer as well. Now, if we take a look at our on-chain example, this is our program here. And you can see that we got two different types of instructions. So we can either use a CPI to make the transfer or we can use our program to make the transfer. And what that basically means is the CPI version is gonna be doing the same thing we just saw, right? It's gonna go send instructions to the system program and the system program is gonna make the transfer. The program transfer is gonna be when our program owns these accounts and it's allowed to change the data. So it can just directly modify its Lamport balance. So we'll see both. So you can see here, we're just gonna kind of direct our program based on the instruction. We saw this in the processing instruction video. And here's our two functions. So here's our CPI one, right? We're just using invoke classical CPI operation, right? We're doing the transfer instruction from system instruction. And then down here, we're gonna do the transfer soul with program, right? And you can see the difference here is we're not using invoke. We actually just go ahead and dereference the payer. And we do this try borrow mute LAN ports. And we actually do that for both accounts. And this will actually give us a mutable reference to the LAN ports balance of that account. And we can directly interact with it and change it. And this will only work if this program owns this account. So in this case, we're gonna make sure both accounts are owned by our program. And they'll be able to decrement this one and increment this one just like the transfer would. In fact, this is how the system program does it too. So if you take a look at our instruction, you can see, just like we've seen before, we're setting up the instruction metadata to direct which one to do. Down here, we create the actual instruction and we just pass in these params here. And then here's our test. So the first one here we're gonna use, we're gonna have this test one recipient and that's gonna be to use the CPI version. We're gonna do it using the system program, of course. And so we're gonna go ahead and set up that instruction using the method we just saw. And then we're gonna go ahead and send and confirm that transaction. And that's of course going to hit this one here on the top and that's gonna run the invoke one. And then down here, we're gonna actually set up the instruction the same way. We're gonna create two accounts that we're gonna make sure have our program as the owner, give them two soul each, and we're just gonna run transfers between them in this test down here. Same exact setup, you can see we're just setting up the program transfer enum instead. So that's gonna send the instruction to this guy down here, right? And so now we're, our program is gonna make the change to the LAN ports. And so then we're just gonna print out the balances, and we'll just see how that looks. And you can see another successful test, right? So we got our payer is decremented, our recipient was incremented in both cases. And you can see here is the two soul we funded, and then we went down to the one there. Now here's the anchor version here. And you can see that it's actually gonna be a little bit less code, which is always nice. So right in our libRS, we've got the two functions, the two instructions that we can send in, same kind of thing, CPI and program. And this is actually what it looks like with Anchor. So we saw Anchor CPI, right? CPI context. This is what the transfer one looks like for CPI. And this is again, if you want the system program to conduct the transfer. But down here, same thing as with native, we can actually do the try borrow mute LAN ports function here and do a dereference. And we can actually directly interact with the LAN ports of our account this way. So you can do this with Anchor too. And then you see, we just have two different contexts here. I didn't wanna add checks here because I didn't wanna add data types to these accounts. I just wanted them to be owned by our program. So you'll see these checks here, but this stuff here is valid for the first one. And then our test file is also gonna look exactly the same as our native one, right? So we're just gonna do the same thing, except this time we don't have to set up instructions like we did with another file. We just use the embedded methods from the IDL. So nothing new, but either way, we're gonna hit the transfer soul with CPI one here. As you can see, same kind of setup. Then we're gonna create two new accounts again, to soul, make sure they're owned by our program, and then go ahead and do the program transfer one 
on this one as well. So let's kick that off. And again, another successful test. And so you can see that the two main ways we can do it on the program side is with a CPI over to the system program, which is gonna do the same thing we just did with the client. And then also transferring with our program as well. And we saw the two ways to do it in native and in anchor. And that's it guys. So whatever one suits your use case, now you know how to transfer soul.